From a time before written history, Hawaiians have gathered at the edge of the sea, there to center their lives upon the bounty of the Pacific Ocean. South Kona on the island of Hawaii is this kind of place, and here the shore was once dotted with many small fishing villages. Today, there is but a single fishing village left in the district, Milulii a last reminder of the way many Hawaiians once lived. Here in South Kona, they still ply their trade as fishermen, raise their families, and play the music taught them by their forefathers, the song of South Kona. My dad died, he died in 56. I think I was about 12, 14 years old I came. We moved home here to stay. Um, this is where, when I would come, I would hear, you know, people like um, Ukuli'i, uh, Titemele Kule, and uh, Lokelani, Malama, them three, always together, always singing. I never heard radio around here in those days. This is where I started thinking about my heritage as a Hawaiian, and uh, this is where my interest started coming. I would imitate, I would imitate Gino Kiava's voice, I would imitate Mele Kule's voice, and uh, all through that, all through that time. And then eventually I started adopting my own style of singing. I started becoming more confident in myself. I just started, kept to myself, never showed off, you know, just kept to myself, and, but I enjoyed the singing. goes back to prehistoric times. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an ancient village. Uh, not too much evidence is left of what was here a long time ago, except there were a lot of people the, that lived here, I understand. And uh, a lot of their descendants still live here today. It's about uh, 17 families, about uh, men, women, and children. About, about 120, uh, throw, you know, then about 50 dogs. <laughs> oh. Yeah, brother. My family go back 10 generations pulling ahis. <laughs> well, my dad, who loves this place, you know, and as far as I can remember, and anybody who knows him for a long, long period of time, know him as an individual of himself. In other words, he was a strong, dominated person to what he believed in and what he wants to do. Everything he did was, was all good for himself, the family, which was us. He worked hard, he sent us all to school, all my sisters and brothers, you know? So he went only to third grade and that's why he wants us to return and continue that love he had for this place. It, like the old folks say, when you lose the land, you lose your life. You know, the land and your life kind of ties in together.
Today, outboard-powered skiffs take Milulii fishermen, like Delfredo, out to the same grounds their fathers and grandfathers knew and fished. Oh, this, this is a okello, yeah? We use it for bait and chum. We call it slice bait, so we're gonna do is cut this in half. Put it in Use the rest of the bone in the head for chow. We soak the spade up on this. Thing like this. Get a rock like this. Put it on. Wrap it. Put the chum on. Gotta get the chum for mixed smell. Eh? Fish come. Uh, trying to catch some uh, yellowfin tuna. So usually we go down to 50 fathoms. Depends on where the fish bite them. Using the simplest of traditional techniques, the fisherman goes about his daily job in a ritual from the primal contest of survival. The sea surrenders its riches to a thin fiber line. Like I said, I thought I knew what Hawaii was until I came here, or Hawaiian. And this place is so Hawaiian out. I mean, nothing at all. I mean, from Honolulu, this place is like different in every way. The, uh, the how you live, what you eat, it's smaller. That I wouldn't leave here at all. And the, the people here are, are good people. They work hard. You start from a place like this, where there's nothing. Everything you do is what you gain, and that's what you have. So you don't rely on nobody, nothing. You just see what you get, and that's what you're going to have. So it's what you make out of yourself that's what you're going to get. Minoli is famous for its uh, opelo fishing. All of the families here uh, centered their family life around catching the opelo. You know, uh, the children went to school at the schoolhouse, and then they would come home and help their parents uh, catch opelo, uh, going out to the coast and uh, catching the opelo, then bringing it in. I recall uh, when I was growing up here, the first years of my life, uh, the different families had their own canoes, you know, like the Apo family, and that was their family. They would all go out to their opelo coast, and the Changs and the Kaupikos, when Makani, I don't like Opelo because you gotta struggle. <laughs> hoy, hoy, when you play, when you see the Opelo, the papa, the Opelo, okay, the middleman feed, and behind you gotta straight the canoe to the, to the wind. Otherwise, you push the canoe uh, away. And then when you're ready to put the net in the water, you say, okay, straight them. Oh, then you struggle, tired. <laughs> <laughs> Holy canoe! Oh, so we get mad. <laughs> oh, it's hard. Plenty of fish, but no more money. We don't need money. Kaula <laughs> ikai, too much you have to dry and then exchange. We sent to Honolulu. Uh, exchange for food. 
a long time ago, you know, when I was a teenager and moved on to Milan, I used to hear my uncle Gabriel and my auntie Makadem, you know, when we go parties like that, they, they sing the song Opilo, and I used to think maybe they composed the song Opilo because Opilo was very famous there in Milan. Opilo fishing was like, that was the main source for them. That is the time now that we are still living yet. We are the last descender on this place now, and we're still living. Now is the time for us to let go what we learn, like hats, like this. In the beginning, this is the old, old way of using as a stripper. And this is the one that my mother had taught us. You go any place, baby, you never go hungry. If you know how to weave, that's where you find your food to support your family. We gather the lahala first. We have to walk to find for this. We have to divide to look the color, to divide the color. We used to have lahala of trees over here and all in this type of lahala. This is the original, original lahala from the tree we pick. We pick these and we take them home and we clean them and we sit there, watch my mother, how she show us how to, to weave. In our days, we don't have electric. We just had charcoal iron. We use charcoal iron. We prepare ourselves with the wood. If we have about one dozen heads, and our charcoal iron is there, it's hot. And we get the candle, you know, the honeybee the candle, we keep that. My dad used to collect honeybees before. So the candle, we, we keep that to clean the, the iron so the iron stays smooth when you iron your hat, your clothes, and everything. So that's why the hat comes out shine. And if it's rain, you won't ruin your hat. Your hat stays pretty every day. Well, that's why, that's why we both wanted to share these songs to you, because we come in old. Maybe we have lots of time more to go, but we rather see this song goes to Diane. Because she's our niece. Why not? That's our love to her, and we want her to continue to keep up with her songs, but she'll carry on the song to the next generation. At least the song oh, never dies you. away. Never dies. Because away. it's uh, recorded and uh, it's well known, you know. It's well known. All around today with some of the songs that uh, Diana sang, oh, beautiful. I hear some other people singing, oh, real nice. See, they have a background, they make the song so mellow. Diane, can you can you play Filikani for us? Yeah. We'll share I, that think, with I think I think where you know this the uh, words in here like poka, topito and uh, you know may have come from maybe maybe Tutu Kapeka may have read too about the war. Yeah, in a newspaper. In the newspaper, because mm -hmm. Nupepa means newspaper in Hawaii. Right. So she may have read about it and then kind of taken herself back to where where um, her kani was, Tutu yeah. Kukulu was. So. Ka 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 
the music, the fishermen's arts are passed from fathers to sons, the basic skills that bring food from the sea, the knowledge of currents, tides, and the seasons, and values that conserve the resources of their livelihood. No need to clean no more. You only take away plenty. You only take what you need. You clean no more. We ain't gonna get any for the next generation to come. sort of been left alone in an isolated place along the southern coast of Hawaii, the big island. And because of the, the road conditions, a lot of people wouldn't want to, you know, traverse that road, that five miles of a winding roadway all the way down to the, the ocean. And, uh, but now with all of this, uh, you know, modern technology and television and all of this, uh, Milo Lee is getting, and getting that exposure to the, the community in the state and, and uh, worldwide, I guess, you know, exposure to the outside. And a lot of people want to come down and visit Milo'i. You know, they've heard about Milo'i being one of the fishing villages here in Hawaii and would like to see that Hawaii that they came here to see. And we hope that uh, when they do come, if they come all the way down at five miles of treacherous uh, winding road, that uh, they respect the place and its people. The road itself passes through the village. It's, it's sort of like going through somebody's uh, living room. And uh, we welcome everybody, but uh, we also want them to respect us also, you know, the people here. Well, that song came to us. Something just like a wind came and tell us. We were yes. talking story. We were talking story, story yeah. about her, about her history, her history, Tutukiaka. Well, we heard a story about Tutukiaka how she used to live there at Ka Manuka, and she used to go down Minoli'i on these two white horse with her uh, two uh, maids with her, nothing but uh, Miley around their neck and and uh, ginger. The songs that you hear during that time, you don't hear them anymore, not today. Even what the people are singing today, you don't even hear them. And uh, some of those songs belong down here. Whether they just made it up that time or what, I don't know, but they were beautiful. The composer of certain songs all come from down here and they move out all these areas, whether they came from this area, Ho'opuloa or Opihali, either one of them, but actually the family line is right down here. February the 5th, 1885, uh, they had a tidal wave. But this tidal wave came, it was a dark, dark night. During the night. During the night. And uh, Minoli used to have plenty of people live, they build house, you know, with rock around fence. 
so <clears throat> happy. A tidal wave came up in a night. But people, uh, family that has plenty of children, they only can take maybe our two kids. See? They grab whatever they can grab. And no light, no nothing. They gotta crawl, holding this baby here, holding this baby and crawl, and the wave come. So that was the story. And that's why they had composed this song. The baby crying, see? Ine Pepe Alalani. That's the meaning of the child say, crying, calling for the mother. This song was given to me by my auntie. Uh, Kapolila Wa'e Omakana. So uh, that was how the story she told me. I got most of the history from her. My deep feeling that Diane is one of the last links with that older generation. And of course, she's trying to pass it on the way she learned it to her sons. Uh, you got Bula, you got Keloha, and, 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 and Willie Boy. And uh, we we're very fortunate to have Diane you know, with us and still uh, being that link with the older generation. Well, I'm getting old when the next generation, they got think for themselves. Yeah, they gotta stand firm and fight for their own right. Yeah. We get all oh, we gone. We can know what they're doing. <laughs> This is one village where they get low all oh, over oh they go out for everything what they got. <laughs> As it has been for centuries. The occasion of a luau brings the families of the village together. Luau's are, in fact, feasts with an abundance of food, entertainment, and fellowship. The pig, a staple in the traditional Hawaiian culture, is often contributed by one family as a gesture of aloha and sharing. It is prepared for cooking by placing searing hot rocks in its belly. Then it's wrapped and buried in the imu, or oven. cook slowly all day under a mound of dirt. People of the village gather to join in the laying of nets in the shallow waters, reaping a rich and bountiful harvest from the sea. As evening approaches, the pig is unearthed and the families come together, each contributing their offerings. A milolii gathering strengthens family ties and becomes a binding force for the community. The village traditions continue. Luau's often go all night, sometimes on special occasions for days. It is here that amateur as well as professional musicians share their talents on a makeshift stage, singing the music of this special place, the song of South Kona. Oh, hey, oh, 
tradition, you know, it's still being passed along, you know, from father to son. It's still, you know, it's, it's still the individual, the, the man out there on the ocean catching, catching ahi o pelo, you know. It's, uh, I like to think it's, uh, it's a Hawaiian fisherman out there on the ocean. 